Hello and welcome to this Kogi Engine tutorial. I'm Renaud from Our Mountains and today I'm gonna explain to you how events work in the Kogi Engine. Uh, they were introduced in version 3.1 and uh, the Kogi Engine now comes with a complete event manager. Events are messages that are broadcasted by a class in your application that can be caught by any listening class so it can take action. For example, uh, maybe you have an enemy in your level uh, when your character kills it. Maybe it will increase the score, but it will also uh, count as progress towards an achievement and you will need to update the GUI somehow. Uh, you could, of course, have your kill method uh, call all these directly but it would uh, require you to keep track of all the references, it would generate coupling, what happens if you don't have a GUI manager, and uh, dependencies. And sometimes you don't know how many other classes you need to inform of that enemy death, and that's where events come in. Events are a way for you to broadcast the fact that something just happened, and any class can listen to it and take appropriate action. They can be really useful to extend the engine, and implement your own features without modifying the base code. To see how events work, uh, the first thing we can do is go into MM Tools uh, Events MM Event Manager, which will be sorry about that, which will be uh, the only point of reference that you will need uh, because everything happens here, and uh, it contains the only method. Uh, you'll need to interact with events. Uh, the first one you need to know is called trigger event. It's really simple to use and there are tons of examples throughout uh, the engine. So um, for example, let's go here. Uh, here we trigger, we are in the character jump ability. So uh, what controls the jump of the character? And every time we start jumping, uh, we trigger a new character event and uh, let's see how this one is used. So character events, they are a struct, like all, all event types, sorry. Um, this struct uh, has a few parameters, uh, a reference to a character, so uh, what character just jumped uh, in this case, and uh, a type, so it will be uh, uh, part of this definition and uh, character event types by default you'll have button activation and jump but you could also have jetpack and stuff really uh, a vast number of um, events are uh, the only ones needed here are these two and to avoid you know clogging the engine uh, i didn't add more but of course feel free to uh, go crazy here so uh, we have these uh, mm character events we also have mm damage taken event um, again, a struct, uh, more parameters here, and this will allow you and you know any class to know that uh, something just took damage. And that way you can check maybe it's my character, maybe uh, I need to change something in the GUI. You can just catch that event and uh, see if you need to apply action. Uh, we also have Corgi engine events, uh, these ones, if we go to the declaration, uh, they are level start, level end, player death. That's basically uh, all you need here. It will allow us to track uh, uh, what happens and, you know, stuff like that. And uh, in some cases, we we'll also have something called MM game event. MM game events are really at the one of the few uh, event types that are included in the engine by default uh, at really at the root level and they only take a string uh, as a parameter which allow you to do really anything you want uh, with it but you have the constraint of having to make sure your string matches uh, if you make a typo of course uh, it will break everything um, and if you if you look here, you'll see that uh, there are quite a few other uh, different types of events. Uh, really, you can create your own. Uh, the system will handle basically any kind of struct, so it's really versatile. And so, uh, yeah, to, to trigger a new event from anywhere and say something has happened, all you need to do is called mm event manager dot trigger event. You don't need to uh, 
put it anywhere by the way uh, on in your class the mm event manager it's uh, a static class so it just lives out there and um, you you call it trigger event and you pass it a new event uh, of the type of your choice in this case I'm calling the character event constructor but you could use the mm game event or something you've defined now that we've seen how to trigger events, let's have a look at uh, how you listen to them. So uh, to do that, let's go into our MM Event Manager and check out Start Listening and find references of that. So um, I'm going to go into the Sound Manager, for example. So the sound manager, uh, of course, we want to listen to MMSFX events, uh, which are a, a new type of event I didn't mention, but uh, as you can guess, it's an event that I think it's defined here. Somewhere at the top, yeah. Uh, it's a, a, another type of event that only takes as a parameter uh, an audio clip to play. That way, uh, you can say you can trigger an event saying, "Hey, I want this sound played," and if you have a sound manager, it will take care of that. If not, you know there will be nobody to listen to your event, and uh, your sound won't be played, but you won't get an error. Uh, so, listening to events is a bit more complex than trigger one. Uh, the first thing you will need is to, at the top of your class here, say that you want to listen to um, MMSFX events or, you know, the, the type of event you're after. You need this, uh, which in turn will mean that you will need to implement these three methods uh, as an interface. So uh, you will have an unenable and undisable method uh, of course, you can do other stuff in it, but uh, you will need to have uh, this start listening method in unenable and this one, this stop listening method in undisable. What these uh, methods do is that uh, they tell the system, the event manager, that uh, this game object, this uh, class here, is listening to this type of event and uh, when we destroy it or we disable it we tell the event manager okay we are not listening to it anymore just ignore us uh, and then you'll need the uh, on mm event method and in this case we'll say okay when we get an event and it's an sfx event we do this thing uh, in this case we just play the sound um, and it's it's really simple uh, you'll have other examples in uh, and, and more complex ones in the achievement rules uh, which basically uh, catch a lot of different types of events as you can see here we're listening to basically all the events that we have uh, and depending on them you'll see different implementations uh, in some cases we'll compare uh, the event type to uh, uh, an enum but in other cases, maybe we'll compare to a string, stuff like that. So um, yeah, that's that's pretty much all there is uh, to triggering and listening to events. Uh, it's really a, a powerful system, not something that is uh, really for beginners in Unity, uh, even if I tried to make it as simple as possible, but the, the simple concept and um, coding with events uh, takes, you know, some... Uh, some some more skills than just uh, assembling a, a prefab. So, um, but if, if you manage to get in the good mindset and understand that you don't need dependencies anymore, you don't need references anymore, and you can just say, hey, something happened, and your other classes, they can listen to that, it's really something powerful and uh, it will lead to some much more clean code. I hope you learned something new today and I'll see you next time.